I'm Marin, and this is Post-its and Pens. Hello, and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marin, and here you will find a little beauty, a little books, and a little teaching content. So if that sounds like something you might enjoy, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe and join me in my little corner of YouTube. Today, I am going to be answering the questions to the Bougie Beauty Guru tag. This tag was originally created by Agape Love Girl in the summer of 2019. I will leave a link to her video down below, but it's just basically some questions that you answer to decide if you are a bougie beauty guru or not. Now, quick caveat, I don't consider myself a beauty guru. I am just someone who, to quote Hannah Louise Poston, loves beautiful things. But I suppose that some people might find that a little bougie on its own, so there you go. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into the video. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of background about this tag. I am going to be reading off of my computer, so if you see me looking over there, that is what I'm looking at. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of read just a little info about the tag and why it was created. So here is what the creator said. So this tag is a fun way for beauty influencers to analyze their shopping habits to determine whether they are bougie makeup buyers or not. For reference, bougie is a slang term that plays on the French term bourgeois, and it describes expensive places, people, and things. Now, as I mentioned, I don't really consider myself a beauty influencer. I have a tiny, tiny little corner here in YouTube that some of you have decided to follow, but that might change, I suppose, as maybe I gain a bigger audience, but I kind of just thought that these questions sounded like fun and I wanted to go ahead and try my hand at them. So here are the questions. Question number one, would you rather buy one expensive or luxury item or buy several items with the same amount of money? Now, at this point in my life, and considering that I am currently following a beauty budget and am on a low buy year, which I will link my introduction to up in the cards should you want to give that a watch, I am very careful and mindful about the amount of items that I am bringing into my collection. So more is not necessarily better in my opinion. Just because you can get more things for the same price doesn't mean that you should go ahead and do that. So that means that I am more likely to spend money on something that is more expensive if it is just the one item that I really want rather than purposely purchasing more items for the same amount of money, if that makes sense. So I look at the price only in terms of whether I can fit it into my budget for the month or if it would be a good purchase for me. So I am not really paying attention to the price necessarily if it is truly an item that I really, really want. And I would much rather bring that one item into my life rather than a whole bunch of other items just because I could afford them. Question number two, when it comes to beauty products, do you believe the phrase, you get what you pay for? Sometimes, yes. I do find that pricier skincare brands tend to work better for me personally. I don't know if that is just because they maybe have better quality ingredients or maybe they've, can, they've been able to truly test the efficacy of said ingredients, but I tend to have much better luck with higher end skincare products than I do with drugstore products. And I have tried a lot of both. So I definitely do think that with skincare, you definitely get what you pay for. But in terms of luxury makeup, I do not believe that that is the case. I think there are quality items at the drugstore and even more mid-range brands. You do not need to spend tons of money on a luxury makeup brand, which you're really only paying that price for the brand name. So just my two cents. 
Number three is asking, what's the most expensive beauty item you've purchased with your own money? Now, both of these things that I'm going to mention, I have not purchased for probably three or four years at this point, but the most expensive thing that I have ever purchased was the Drunk Elephant TLC Framboos Night Serum, and that was a one ounce bottle for $90. In second place underneath of that is the Sunday Riley Good Jeans, which has a one ounce bottle that sells for $85. I have purchased one of the Drunk Elephants items and two of the Good Jeans, although as I mentioned, it's been years since I've done either. So those would definitely be the top two in terms of the amount of money that I spent on a product. Number four says, are you willing to buy products at full price or do you, do you usually wait for a sale or discount code? So I am willing to spend full price on an item. I do not need to wait for there to be a sale. I think that that can get you into some trouble because you might be more likely to add things to the cart that you don't need just because they are on sale. I also buy from brands that don't have sales a lot of the time. So if I've run out of something, since I am on a replacements only low buy, I am just going to buy that item regardless of whether it's on sale or not. Again, these are items that I've put a lot of thought into that I'm being very mindful about whether I really want them or not. So I don't mind spending full price for them so long as I am getting what I feel I need or want and I'm willing to spend the money on. Number five, where do you shop for beauty products the most? The answer to this is definitely Sephora. I get a lot of my products from Sephora. I also get some of my items from Ulta. I use a couple of products from CeraVe and Ulta typically will have a pretty good sale on those. So that's kind of where I go for those products. But I also purchase directly from some brand websites. So for instance, Crave Beauty is one brand that I will just buy directly from their website because that's the only way to get the products. And then Sunday Riley is another one that I've gone ahead and just purchased directly from the brand. Question six, how often do you get your nails and or hair done? I do not get my nails done. That is just not something that I am interested in doing. I'm happy to paint them on my own when I feel like doing that. As you can see, I have not felt like doing that. So I've not painted them for a few weeks at this point, but I will just take care of that myself. I don't need to spend money to have someone else do it for me. My hair used to be something that I hardly cut at all because it used to be quite long. Now it is shoulder length. I am actually getting it cut tomorrow back up to about here. And since I did cut so much of it off and I do wear it in a shorter style now, it does require more frequent haircuts. So I typically go every two to three months to get it trimmed back to the length that I would like it at. Question seven, do you prefer long or short nails? And hands down, I prefer short nails. They just work the best for me. I am kind of prone to breakage or peeling, which can get pretty bad if the nails get long. I also played the violin for over 11 years, and when you play the violin, you cannot have long nails, so I just got used to them being short. When I was little, I also used to bite my nails, so keeping them short kind of keeps any of those urges at bay, even though I broke that habit way, a way long time ago, like before I was even in high school, but yeah, I just prefer short nails. I think they look better on my fingers, and they just work for me. Question eight. What, which makeup brush brand is your favorite? I don't have one. My brushes come from a bunch of different companies and I kind of just use them interchangeably. I don't pay attention to the brand when I'm using them. I just use whatever works for me. So I am not partial to any particular brand. I just pick up something if it strikes my fancy or I think it will work for me. Question number nine is asking high-end or drugstore mascara. 
and I have used both in the past. However, of late, I've definitely been leaning more towards high-end mascara. I have a really terrible time with smudging under my eye. I get a lot of black under my eye by the end of the day. If the mascara is not something that holds on really well. So I used to use the Essence Lash Princess, which made my lashes look really nice, but it was horrible in terms of the smudging. This year I found a whole bunch of little minis of some various high-end mascaras that I've been working my way through and the one that I've liked the best has been the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. So I am leaning towards purchasing that when I'm finally through all of those minis but obviously we will see. I still have several months before I'm going to have to worry about that. Number 10 says, think of your favorite makeup brand. Is it drugstore, high-end, luxury, or indie? And again, I, just like with the brushes, I don't have a favorite makeup brand. So my collection is very eclectic. I have items from a bunch of different brands. Before the start of 2021, I really went through and curated my collection. I got rid of things that I knew there was no way I was going to use and really just cut it down to things that I don't mind using in terms of using them up, even though I won't necessarily repurchase, and then things that I truly love. So I do not have a favorite brand. I have a mix of drugstore and more mid-range slash high-end makeup, and I like them all equally or they would not be in my collection. Question number 11, and the last question says, considering your answers to these questions, do you think you're bougie? So I don't think that I am, but I can see why others might say that I am. As I've mentioned, I don't mind spending money on pricier items if I feel like they work for me and if they fit in my budget. I am not necessarily going to always buy high-end, but I'm also not always going to lean drugstore. So I'm definitely willing to drop cash on things that I truly love and truly want to add to my collection or truly feel are beneficial to me. And I guess if that makes me bougie, then I am a-okay with that. And that is the end of the Bougie Beauty Guru tag. If you are interested in answering this yourself, I will leave the questions down below. It's just something fun to kind of go through and think about your answers to and kind of really pick out where your preferences lie in terms of your favorite items. So. If you do answer the questions, I would love for you to link me to them. I would love to give them a watch and see what you thought about your purchase habits. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more from me, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.